this was going to be a really simple video. I had a little fuel leak on my 600 Pro X here, and I was just going to fix it. You know, show you how I diagnosed it and fixed it. Well, things got a little more complicated. Uh, I have to split the rack carbs, and the rack carbs have a throttle position sensor. And in order to put it back together, I'm going to have to pull the throttle position sensor off because a little spring-loaded piece inside went click, and now the shaft doesn't go back in. So that brings me into the electrical world. How do you adjust your throttle position sensor correctly? And how do you even know if it's a good throttle position sensor or a bad one? I'm going to walk you all through that. I'm going to show you a real, really simple rig that you can build for about $30. I'm going to show you the exact parts. In the description is the exact parts I use. You can click on those links and buy those parts from Amazon. Stay tuned, and I'll show you what's up with this. Well, that wasn't very bad to figure out the uh, leak at all. There's this T right here. I'm going to wipe it off. There's a T, and I assume there's O-rings on it. And I don't know if you could see that on the camera, but I can see it with my eyes. The gas is just creeping out of the O-rings on each side. So looks like I'm going to have to split them carbs apart. All right, seems like a good time to bring you back. And I uh, just want to show you one thing I did over here on the motor. I stuffed some paper towels in the boots right away just so I wouldn't get any, you know, if I drop a screw or something, I won't get it into the motor. And then uh, I got the carbs split over here. And uh, I don't I don't know what I'm doing with these carbs. I'm a Makuni round slide guy, but I'm checking her out, looking for the O-ring. Well, there's, if there's supposed to be an O-ring on that, I don't think it's there. So i uh, bring you back when I learn something else. Well, that didn't take long to learn something else. Instead of an O-ring, there's these uh, rubber fittings that go on each of those. Um, I'm just going to get some new ones on order and try to figure out how to sync up rat carbs. Back for another update. This is called an ASM-nipple. The Polaris number is 3131374. And I got lucky. Polaris still sells them. They didn't discontinue it yet. So uh, I got one coming. I guess I'll get back to this in a couple days. Gives me a little time to research how to get this back together, I guess. All right, so as you've seen, this started out with my rat carbs. Uh, had a fuel leak on this little T-fitting with these rubber pieces. Just a slow leak, but of course you have to split the rack to make space to get that in and out. And when you do that, your throttle shaft comes out of the TPS. And uh, when your throttle shaft's out of the TPS, at least mine didn't want to go back in. So the way I'm going to overcome that is to take the TPS off. But the TPS is adjustable. Now, you could just mark it and pray, but I'm going to show you for about 30 bucks how to put together a little tester to check your TPS and make sure that it's working right and uh, get it set exactly to the specification. So here you can see I have the TPS off the carbs plugged into the harness. You can see there's a pink, a black, and a yellow. Uh, that would imply that the yellow is what we're going to look for the output signal on, and the pink and black are most likely positive and negative. So we're going to go over and verify that with a meter really quick. So here's the components I'm going to use to test my TPS and adjust it. This is just a 12-volt to 5-volt DC regulator. This is a pigtail that plugs into the sensor, and uh, even though the colors don't match, we'll show you how to figure out what to hook up where. And then these are just some uh, some plugs to plug into meters. I'm going to have links to these components uh, on Amazon in the description of this. So uh, if you're going to build one of these, please go ahead and click on those links because those links will help me support the channel. Um, I'll also need a, a, a voltmeter. And I'm going to use a 12-volt DC power supply with this. But I'm going to tell you right now, that's not necessarily required. You could use a garden tractor battery. Uh, you could use a small battery charger or a battery tender. All you need is something that makes just 12 volts DC to go to this black and this red wire here. Before we get too carried away with the fancy stuff, I want to show you how to test if your throttle position sensor is good or bad. 
So this is just a, a carbon resistor, just a thin film carbon resistor. It's a variable resistor. When you twist that middle part, the resistance changes. It only twists one way and it's spring loaded. Don't force it the wrong way or you'll break it. So I like to use an analog meter for this. In fact, I think it's mandatory. There's no way you'll be able to detect a, a, a fault in your TPS with a digital meter because the readings are just going to jump around too much as you twist it. So when you twist it, you're looking for a very smooth needle movement. So I just put my screwdriver into it and twist slowly. And there we go. Go back down. So there we go. She's perfect. This is a good TPS. If the needle's all jumpy, jittery, or drops to one end or climbs to the other end and then goes back to the middle, anything strange, anything other than a, a smooth movement that echoes your twisting here, that indicates you need a new TPS. So this one's good to go. It's going back on the sled. All right, so I am going to put in a wiring diagram on how to hook up this voltage regulator and these wires to this pigtail. And I'll also include a wiring diagram of how to hook it up to the meter and test it, what the settings are. Um, that's how to test the regulator, make sure it's working right. And then also for the, uh, how to just test your, your voltage. So that'll go right here. All right, so step one, we're going to test and make sure the voltage regulator works right. Always test stuff. So I'm plugging the black into the common. The red goes into the positive. We're on the DC voltage. And boom, 5.12 volts, and it is hooked up in the right direction. All right, the next test I'm going to do, I'm going back to the analog meter so you can see this. On the sled, I'll use the digital. So the wiper, this lone wire by itself here, the wiper goes into the plus on the, on the meter and the, the black out of the voltage regulator goes to the negative. You wanna be on your DC volts and I am on the 15 volt DC scale here. And hopefully you can see the needle moving. Try to get this probably laying down is better. So, it's at zero volts. Let me turn this on. We remain at zero volts. That's a good test. Now I'm going to twist the TPS and you can see it rising. So I don't think you're going to be able to read the scale, but it gets all the way up to five volts at the top of the scale. So we have things configured right. So when I put this on the sled, now I will be able to connect these two wires to the digital meter and uh, set the uh, TP or set the carbs to wide open throttle, and then I'll just twist this throttle position sensor until I get a four volt reading and lock it down. Actually, I won't even do it on the sled. I'll do it on the bench. So uh, once I get the carbs back together, we'll come back to that. Well, I'm picking up on my edge where I left off a week ago. I've been waiting for that inlet fitting for, for a week. And uh, I'm going to get back at it, get the carbs together, get them synced, and get the uh, throttle position sensor on it. All right, so here's my little T. I put a little silicone grease on the rubber pieces, and uh, it just slides in. Boy, it doesn't take much to slide it in. So um, you can see I've got the shaft started through the uh, lever here that picks up the slide. And the next thing I got to do is get this little piece on that uh, lifts the choke. Now I can start working these together. Okay, so it's time to put the racks together. And it's been a while since I took these apart. It's been sitting here apart a whole week. But 
and start by slipping in a spacer. Get one screw started. Other spacer, other screw. Which side's got the threads? All right, over there. Click. All right, my racks are whole again. That's a good thing. Now, to get my choke plungers lined up, looks like they are lined up. They're both both chokes are down. Just kind of a kind of a little Phillips head grub screw arrangement on there. Really can't sink your chokes too much. There is a flat spot that that lands on. All right. Looks like the choke plungers lift in unison, and they're shutting all the way off. That's good. So the next thing is the sinking, and the sinking is a little odd on this. Um, actually, this brass piece is eccentric, and so there's a patch lock on this screw, and you screw it in, and then you adjust that brass piece to sink. And there's a procedure in the service manual that I need to go read. But when you're done, you lock it with that screw. And I can feel the patch is still working. There's still some resistance, so that's a good thing. Okay, so I just went and looked up the, the procedure for sinking the carbs. It's super straightforward for all practical purposes. It's visual. So you hold this wide open. There is this buried in here. There is this throttle stop screw. So on the carb with the screw, you get the slide just flush with the top. Now on the other side, you need to then match that with this little eccentric. I don't know if you can see that, but there's that brass eccentric. And this one needs to go up. I don't know. I'm just going to start turning it until it goes up to match. Just kind of fiddly. You get the idea. I'm just going to I'm just going to fiddle with this until I get it. All right, ready to adjust the throttle position sensor. So I just put it on. It's in a random position. And you see, I, you can see I've got the rig hooked up, just like discussed before. And at wide open throttle, it's at 4.2 volts. So I need to loosen the screws a little because she's pretty tight. And I, I do have this security bit. I think I mentioned that earlier, but... I'll mention it again because a week has gone by since I took that thing off. So, here we go again. 4.2, twisting, wrong way. I'll loosen that up a little more. All right, that is hard to hold against that spring pressure. A lot of pressure on my thumb. All right. Four point zero zero volts at wide open throttle. Let's hope it doesn't move as I tighten it. I'm gonna let go while I tighten it down. All right. So after a certain amount of fiddly adjustment back and forth, put this to wide open. Close enough. Within one one hundredth of a volt, more than good enough. So I think it's time to put these carbs back on the sled. All right, I swapped out my uh, pigtail here because the the retainer on this is broke off. If somebody had it zip tied on. So I just want to remind you when you do that, uh, the wire colors don't match anymore. Don't go by the colors. Go by the position. 
So you can look at it on the end and you can see what's in what position. All right, everything's back together. It's time to give her a pull. I'm going to tell you right now, the last thing I did before I put the air box on was give a squirt of gas down each carb. Hopefully she pops on the first pull. I don't know. That's what I'm hoping for, and hopefully it'll be enough to get fuel up to the carbs and keep it running. But we won't know until we know. All right, not enough, but I'll get a few more pulls. That surely helped. Could it be flooded already? Harley? Harley? Please? Please? Could it be flooded already? Oh, she got flooded that bad. running sounded like maybe it's only running on one i don't know it's, it's after dark but uh i guess i'll take her for a quick rip i'm not going to be able to take you with for the ride well i could but it's dark and you won't see anything so that'll be a couple days down the road probably <laughs> All right, well, by the time I had this thing backed out, the idle was perfect. If she's running on both, she rips. So uh, can't wait to get some daylight to take you guys for a ride on it. Well, I finally have some daylight. Let's take this thing for a rip. As you can see, she's definitely fixed. Fuel leak's gone, TPS is adjusting right, it's running fantastic. Couldn't be happier, except for one thing. This is not studded like the Indy 650, so there just wasn't enough traction available today to ride the big wheelies like the 650 was able to do. Uh, we just need more snow here. So uh, pray for some more snow for us here in Minnesota. We could really use that. Uh, with that said, I'm gonna wrap up the video. Uh, I want to say thanks for watching. Please hit the uh, subscribe button if you haven't yet. And I want to mention a couple channels that are worth checking out. Uh, one is called Let's Fix Something. It's another local guy, local to me, that uh, I've never actually met him yet, but I enjoy his videos. Similar around 500 subscribers channel, doing old sled stuff. And another one is Matt's Workshop. I believe he's up in Canada. If you're into skidoos, he's a good guy to watch. 
I'm not saying don't watch my stuff. Please watch them all. Give those guys a chance. And uh, let's see, uh, let's see uh, if we can get some more viewers for everybody. Hopefully they'll do the same shout out for me. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the trails.